What's up, YouTube? I'm Mr. No Name, or Max, as people know me in the real world, and today I'm bringing you guys a competitive 2v2 gameplay here. But first of all, I owe you guys an explanation as to why I haven't been uploading again. I know it's been like two or three weeks. Basically, technology once again hates me. No surprise. Everything keeps breaking on me. Even after I replace the heat sinks on my computer, it's starting to overheat again. And when I try and render, it tends to bump it up to 300 plus hours to finish rendering. And I'm... You know, I got a cooling pad, I got ice packs, so hopefully this video will render, but, um, and if it doesn't do that, it'll just shut off sometimes, so it's, it just hates me, and for a while it wouldn't connect to the internet either, so I couldn't upload even if I finished, and then my Elgato is still giving me issues, I haven't had much time to work with that because I've been so concerned about my computer, and then a couple days ago, my mix amp broke, so I gotta buy another one, so yeah, just tons of little repair things trying to go on it's not been fun but that's why i haven't been uploading but um today's video is going to be a 2v2 tips and tricks video for s and d i know somebody requested it a while ago i don't remember the name because it's been a while but i thought i'd go ahead and do that so just to let you guys know levi and i have only been playing doubles matches since we've gotten back into competitive you know about a month ago and we've been pretty good at it so far you know we've been getting better as well we i think we've played probably somewhere between 100 and 150 matches by now through umg and mlg just kind of going back and forth um so yeah that's kind of our little credentials on it we're by no means you know top mlg tournament 2v2 players right now or anything but we're we're getting pretty good at it so i wanted to go ahead and share these tips with you guys so first thing is the play style for doubles. The play style for doubles tends to need to be pretty aggressive. This particular setup just it works so well just pushing through bomb sites together, just pushing on through because when you camp in doubles, you tend to get flanked a lot or you know just they come from the wrong way every time. It's better to just get aggressive, I find. Um you know, every now and then of course you do need to switch it up, play more passive or whatnot to throw your opponent off, but generally aggressive play styles work the best. Next thing is sticking together. You know, for a while, actually for a long time, we would still split up on defense to try and cover both bomb sites, and we found that that just doesn't tend to work very well. Um, there's a few maps that we'll still do that on for a few rounds, but most of the time we just stick together now, and it works so much better just because... It's hard to get that double kill when you're alone, but when you've got another player there, it makes it a lot easier to set it up. And next thing is making sure that you're setting up so that you can trade kills. And this means sticking together, building on the last point there. You don't want to butt buddy with them, you know, you don't want to be right there, but you want to be in the same general vicinity so that you can pick up the kill if your teammate gets killed. That's how that's going to work. And then that leads into the next point, which is the bait and switch. And this is the most important tactic to use in doubles for the win. It it really is. I mean, if you don't know what a bait and switch is, you do this in 4v4 as well. It's just when somebody will run across an area to draw the fire of an enemy player, and then another person will run across while that person's distracted and pick up the kill. Well, maybe not run across. They might just have to get on a little head glitch. But basically, one player is drawing the fire, and then the other person comes out and gets the kill. Now, this can be done in a bait-and-switch from the same spot, like both across mid-street and Warhawk, for example, or it could be... You know, you're just kind of shooting at them, you're just trying to draw their fire, and then the person comes around on the flank and gets the kill. You know, it can be something like that as well. Um, but yeah, bait and switch is the most important thing to do in doubles. It is what will make you win, for sure. Next thing, let's talk about lethals and tacticals. So, starting off with lethals, I don't find nades to be that effective in this game. I really don't. In 4v4, it's alright. In doubles, it's... It's okay. I mean, I might even get a kill with a nade in this game. I'm not sure. But most of the time, it's not really going to do anything. Uh, I would put on tacticals over lethals if that's what you're coming down to choosing. So tacticals, the ones you're going to want to be using are smokes, trophies, stuns, and nades. Or not nades, I'm sorry. What am I saying? Smokes, stuns, and trophy system. <laughs> 
I don't know why I was saying nades. That's lethals. But anyway, smoke is the best for doubles, I would say, because it can be used to bait players out. It can be used as cover, and it can be used as a distraction. It is so versatile. Smokes are absolutely amazing, although I tend to not run smokes. I tend to leave that up to Levi. Um, on Octane, I'll run smokes, though, but I need to make another smoke class, probably. But, um, yeah, and then stuns, of course, are used for stun checks, and then trophy system is always good if you're the bomb planner so that you can, you know, not fear of dying from nades. But it's not quite as important in doubles because not as many people run the nades. So, yeah, that's how that typically works. Next thing is the idea of using a sniper. And a lot of people are scared to death to use a sniper in doubles because they think they're going to miss and then they lose the round or the game. And... Sometimes, yeah, you don't want to use a sniper, but if you've got a player with, that has a good sniper shot, you want them to use it, because people don't expect it as much in doubles, and if you have a good sniper, you can absolutely shut down people, because, you know, especially on a map like Octane, you'll get that first blood every round, and it'll just make it so easy for you guys to win. We've done that a couple times, it works really, really well. Just don't use the sniper every round, or they're going to find a way to counter you, obviously. Next thing is setting up on a bomb. So when you are setting up because you've got the bomb down and you've still got both of your players alive, your goal is to try and watch all the choke points surrounding it but still be set up for the trade if one of your players goes down. And that can be pretty tricky, but you know, you just got to do it. And if you can't do that, then what you might want to do is have one person sit close to the bomb so that they can either hear it or see it. And then another person making a lap. I know that's kind of splitting up and you may not get the trade, but that works sometimes as well. Uh, next thing to talk about is the 1v2 situation. So if you're in a 1v2, the last thing you want to do is plant the bomb unless you're just out of time. If you're out of time, you have to plant. Just do it. But you want to try and get that first pick. Now let's say you do have to plant. The first thing that you got to know is... You do not want to camp. If you camp in a 1v2 with bomb down against any sort of decent player, you're dead. Because they will just set up for that trade, like I've been talking about, or they'll be pinching you from both directions and you're dead. What you have to do is you have to get aggressive and you have to make laps around the bomb. Or maybe not even just make one lap, you know, a really long one, although they could get the ninja defuse then. But, you know, you getting aggressive is going to probably it's it's more likely to get you the win here because they are probably going to split up to try and pinch you they're they're not quite as likely to set up for the trade right away they're going to try and come from both sides and then be ready for the trade so if you can do that you can win the round sometimes you know it's it's still iffy because it's a 1v2 but that's that's just some tips for that and then the last thing i want to talk about here is kind of the synergy and chemistry you have with your teammate so obviously Levi and I have really good synergy and really good chemistry because we've been teaming together for uh, I think at least a year now. It, it's got to be at least a year now. And we just know what each other's going to do. We react perfectly to each other. We don't get down on each other. You know, just having that good attitude, the good synergy and everything, it just works out so well. It makes you win a lot more. So, you know, play with people that you enjoy playing with. You know, you don't want to just play with some a-hole that's going to put you down the entire time so yeah we're out of time so as you guys can see we're coming to the end of this video if you enjoyed it then please like comment and or subscribe if you didn't then let me know what i can do better next time constructive criticism goes a long way guys until next time everybody peace out